I would like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Hillary Clayton. Dr. Clayton was appointed as the first incumbent of the Mary Ann McPhail Equine Performance Center at Michigan State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Hillary Clayton. Well, good afternoon and, and welcome. We're here to talk about conditioning programs for dressage horses. Now, when you think about preparing a horse for competition, there are a whole lot of different aspects that come into it. One of them is simply training the horse to teach him technical skills. And hopefully, you are all somewhat expert in that already. So I'm not going to talk about the, the training per se, although I will include some ways that you can use the exercises in your conditioning program. But what I really want to talk about is conditioning. And I would describe conditioning as the physiological preparation of the horse for the sport of dressage. So conditioning aims to improve the horse's fitness. And by having a fitter horse, hopefully we can improve our competition scores by making the horse stronger and better able to perform the movements. But also very importantly, we can reduce the risk of injury by making the horse's body stronger and more resilient, so more resistant to the effects of exercise. Now, if you came to this talk thinking that you're going to go away with a lot of exercise prescriptions that will tell you exactly what to do from day one to day 101, you're going to be disappointed. Um, I don't teach conditioning that way. What I try to give you is some ground rules that you can take away and use to then develop a conditioning program that's highly specific to your horse, to your circumstances, to the part of the country you live in, so that all of those things can be taken into effect, into um, consideration in designing your conditioning program. So I like the program to be specific to, obviously, the horse. The age of the horse is the first thing you might want to look at. Now, a lot of people will not start working or conditioning horses until they're mature. And that's fine. I have no quarrel with that. But I do want you to be aware that some of the tissues of the horse's body are more malleable and more able to be strengthened when the horse is still immature. Now, if we start working a horse at a younger age, that doesn't mean he's going to get to Grand Prix any sooner. That's not the goal. The goal is to take this younger horse and build up the amount of work very, very slowly, but in a way that it develops a stronger framework for the horse. We'll also want to know something about the horse's history before we start a conditioning program. Has the horse been conditioned previously? If you're working with a thoroughbred off the racetrack, then you can be pretty sure that horse already has a high level of cardiovascular fitness, even if he's been off racing for a while. We also want to know about the horse's soundness. Are there any soundness issues that have to be taken into consideration when you're designing the conditioning program? For example, if a horse has had a soft tissue injury, we're going to be making progress very slowly, more slowly than we would with a horse that was sound to begin with. And also, there might be some things that we need to avoid. Again, the horse with the soft tissue injury, we would certainly want to avoid deep footing during the conditioning program. Now today we're all here to talk about dressage, so that makes my life a little bit easier than when I do um, you know, a group that some of the people are eventers and some of them are doing endurance racing and some of them are doing barrel racing. Um, and that makes the conditioning that much more diversified. At least here we're all concerned with the same sport. But it's very different um, designing a conditioning program for a low-level horse versus an FEI-level horse. You know, that's almost as different as if it were two whole separate sports. So the first message to take home is that you should tailor the amount and type of conditioning exercise to the sport, the level of competition, and the specific needs of your individual horse. 
So this should be a highly individualized um, process. Now I'm going to give you some of my what I call conditioning principles. And these are you know, the, the sort of underlying laws that I use when I design a conditioning program. And the first one is the principle of adaptation. And this principle tells us that the horse's body will adapt to the regular workload. And I've highlighted regular here um, for a very definite reason. If you take a horse out and let's say you go to a racetrack and he gallops for a mile just one time, that will not have a conditioning effect. If the horse was to go to the racetrack three times a week and gallop a mile every time, then he would become fitter. He would become very fit in terms of being able to gallop that one mile distance. But when he'd achieved a certain level of fitness, he would not keep on getting more and more fit. So the body adapts to the regular workload. And what we have to do is provide sufficient work and repeat those workouts often enough that we keep giving the horse a new conditioning stimulus. So we keep kind of upping the ante. And we can actually make a measure of the volume of work that a horse performs over a period of time by looking at the intensity of the work. That tells us how hard the horse is working. We look at the duration of the work, which tells us how long he's working. And then we look at the frequency, which tells us how often the workouts are repeated. And I'm going to come back to this later. So my second principle of conditioning, I call the principle of progressive loading. Now, if you're from the human fitness field, They'll often talk about overloading, which means keeping, increasing the amount of loading. I tend to stay away from that term a little bit with the horses because it has a slightly negative sort of connotation. So I talk instead about progressive loading, but it's the same idea as overloading. And the basics behind this principle are that any time we introduce a new exercise or a new type of exercise, then you introduce it very gradually. You start with just a little. And when I say a new exercise, it might be something like um, you might start working the horse on a hill. So the first time, you might only go up and down the hill once. You might do that um, three times a week for a week, and then increase to doing the hill up and down twice each day. So that's how you progressively load, by increasing the volume in these small increments. And an increment might be an increase in the intensity of the exercise, so it might mean working the horse a little bit harder, or it might be an increase in the amount of time that you work the horse for. But you wouldn't increase both things together. It would be one or the other. And it means that the conditioning program progresses in a sort of stair-step pattern. You have a level of exercise or a volume of exercise that you maintain for a period of time, and then you have an incremental increase. So you slightly increase the volume of exercise and then maintain that for a period of time, and so on. So you gradually build up the amount of exercise that the horse is performing. And also inherent in this principle of progressive loading is the idea that every time we have an incremental increase in the amount of exercise that the horse is performing, we have to repeat that amount of exercise several times to allow time for the horse's body to adapt to that workload. Right? So it's increase the workload, allow the body to adapt, and then you have the next increase in the workload. Now let's put this into the context of the effects of exercise on the body tissues. In the short term, what happens is that when the horse goes out and exercises, there will be some microscopic damage to the body tissues. Now I'm not talking here about the sort of damage that would cause 
heat or swelling or pain or you know, any visible signs of injury, but just microscopic damage to the tissues. And the body's natural response to that is to repair itself. So we get microscopic damage, and the body repairs itself. I don't want you to go away thinking you, don't have, you, you can't ever work your horse hard again because you're going to be damaging him. That, that's not the issue here. Um, it's the normal process that after that damage, the horse will heal himself. But what happens over the longer term is that with this conditioning program, we get repeated cycles of microscopic damage and repair, damage and repair. And over time, what happens is that the body repairs itself into a stronger structure. So through these repeated cycles, the tissues actually become stronger and fitter. The horse gets fitter. And this is how this adaptation to the workload actually occurs. Okay, we work the horse, a little bit of damage, we allow regeneration, the damage heals.